Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're gonna to be talking about the only six exercises you need to build incredible functional strength. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life routine. And it doesn't get much better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right. So you and I both know that there are a million exercises out there that we could be doing. But in reality, there are only six exercises that we should be doing. Now make sure you hear me correctly here before you just tune out and shut me down right now. Because what I'm speaking of are the six fundamental movement patterns that we really need to understand in order to build solid functional strength that transfers from our training in the gym into our daily life and routine and gives us that protective benefit of practice. Because practice does not make perfect, practice makes permanent. And that's something that you really need to understand. What we're practicing in the gym, in this lab here, is what is getting executed in the playing field, in your daily life, in your routine. And that is where we are injuring ourselves when we are practicing poorly because we're doing variations of exercises that are well beyond what we should be scaling at this point and simply not having the foundational structure that we should in place. So with all that said, there are six exercises that we're gonna lay out here today and give you some background on so you can focus on the bare bones, that foundation, that structure that you can build off to increase your functional strength and overall strength in general moving forward from here on out. Let's get into it. Exercise number one, the squat. Of all these movements, this is one of the most important for us to be able to do, to functionally be able to drop our hips below the height of our knees, which is not all that common as it should be these days. We're losing that ability because of a lot of our daily adaptations that are causing things to change, which is causing our overall functionality to change. So the squat is one of the most foundational bunk basic strengths that we should have that will make us functionally strong. Some of the features that we see in a good deep squat are ankle dorsiflexion at a deep level, the knee in deep flexion, the hip in deep flexion, and the ability to control an upright torso and brace the spinal column really well in that structure and make sure that it can stay organized. Now there are options from there, but under load, it's an organized spine that we're looking for. And from there, you can play with flexion if you're in more of a third world squat where you're just relaxed in the most furthest depth of that squat. Now, as far as starting squats to begin with, when you are just beginning, you should be able to execute a body weight squat or an air squat comfortably to full depth. If you cannot do this, this is the foundation that you need to go back and reestablish before you worry about loading up any weight on your squats. And from there, when you are loading up, the first place to begin is a goblet squat where you are holding that load out in front to a level that is just below knee height. You can build that depth up, but we want to practice our strength through our full range of motion of that squat at all times when the key is that we're looking for functional strength, okay? So keep that in mind. This is in the context of building functional strength. So we should be practicing full ranges of motion on those squats, starting with body weight and then scaling to goblet. Then we can start to look at loading up with a bar or different other means from there. But your base structure is that air squat. Exercise number two, 
the hinge. And this even takes a greater priority than our squat, and it's for this reason here. Even our squat should begin with a small hinge movement so that we are loading our posterior chain. Now, that is huge to understand. We think of the squat and the hinge as two separate movements, which they definitely can be where a normal hinge is more hip dominant, our squat is more knee dominant, but more hinge strict patterns will be in that hip positioning. Even that squat starts with a small hinge and it's important to recognize that. So if you have no ability to hinge, then that is a problem to begin with. And one of the most basic ways that we can start to train and practice this hinge pattern is in the form of a glute bridge from the floor. The key here is that you are activating the right musculature. A lot of individuals, not saying it's necessarily you, but if you try it and you do a glute bridge and feel your quadriceps or your hamstrings doing the majority of the work, the movement patterning is off and wrong. Our glute bridge is called a glute bridge for a reason and you should feel those glutes activating to stabilize your pelvis as you lift it from the floor. We should also be able to keep our spine in an isolated position so that the hinge is coming from the hips and not my lumbar spine changing to make that movement happen. This is often where we'll compensate when we lack the ability to hinge or move from the hip up in our lumbar spine or down below again in that musculature like the quadriceps or hamstrings. So glute bridge, you could also do an RDL when you start loading up Romanian deadlift. That could be one of the first loaded variations that you have or a hip thrust is another good option. So these are some varieties that you can work to after you've nailed down that most basic glute bridge pattern to start to use that pattern in a more vertical position from there. Exercise number three, the lunge. Now the lunge is really important because it is a unilateral movement here where the others are both bilateral, meaning that we have two different positions of our legs in the lunge itself. This is going to transfer to movements like walking and running where we are based in a more lateral, unilateral position and functioning off of one leg at a time at a higher speed. Now walking and running are actually more challenging movements in themselves as far as the difficulty level because of the speed that they add to this movement. So a lunge is a great way to build up functionality and strength in this unilateral position so that when we do add that speed, we're not going to injure ourselves. It's important to really understand how to create stability through our pelvis when our hip is in an extended position behind us. And most of us, again, are lacking hip extension and will compensate at the pelvis. So it's very important to pay attention to where the pelvic positioning is. The most basic lunge that I like to start people with is a split lunge where you're simply isolating the position and focused on a vertical movement rather than worried about traveling with a forward lunge or a reverse lunge. Once you have that split lunge down, you can easily start to add in movement if you have the control. And again, we're looking at that pelvic control, the range that you have in extension there, and your ability to access the glutes with that extension and not favor the hip flexors in that position, which is a big one. All right, exercise number four is moving up to our upper body now, and it is our push variation. So any push variation could be a push-up is a basic way to start, a floor press is a great way to start, but pushing in two different planes we really need to understand. We have a horizontal push, like the push-up or that floor press that I mentioned, but we also have a vertical press, so a strict press being able to press up overhead is also an important movement capacity that we should have. So you can consider those two separate ones or a little subcategory within push that you should be able to do. The most basic variation that I recommend for most people to start with is a floor press variation because we are able to feel our body organized very well from the floor underneath us 
and control the spine, engage the core in the way that it should be, and work through a safe range of motion. Once we have that down, then we can start to go into a pronated position, such as the push-up, which makes it a little bit more difficult. But again, lots of varieties are out there. Those are the most basic that you need to build your foundation around. A supinated position, a pronated position, understand those positionings really well so that you can function in them strong and safe and then start to add in difficulty with other stimuli of how the, the movement's being loaded overall. As far as the vertical press, it's gonna be the strict press. So a basic press overhead could be unilateral, could be bilateral. Either way, focusing on organizing the spine and being able to put that force through the ground, making yourself a pillar, is the base that we're working off for our vertical press variety. Number five, pull variations. So similar to our pressing, we have a subcategory here. It's vertical, it's horizontal. So we have two different planes that we want to train through essentially and how we position ourselves. The horizontal pull would be something like a low row or a body row to begin with. Either of those are fine to start to learn your pulling position in the horizontal plane. If you have access to nothing other than a bar that you can grip off of, I recommend using the body weight and getting down the structure of a low row or a pull of your body weight. If you have access to something like a cable machine or even a set Cybex machine, you can do a row in the low row position out front with that machine as well. Very basic movement to begin with there, but here we're building our horizontal pull strength for function. We also have vertical pull strength. This is where I recommend working on those pull-ups. You can do lat pull down, but being able to coordinate, again, the core organization of your body underneath the pull-up or a chin-up even, even if it is assisted by a band, is a very important skill understanding how to base from your hands and stabilize your shoulders to make everything move around that is very important to protecting and stabilizing your upper body in that movement. All right, and exercise number six, last but not least, is our carry. So being able to carry loads for duration or for distance. And what I recommend, first of all, is simply doing holds, isometric positions where we are simply doing a farmer's hold versus a farmer's walk so that we can practice activating the core musculature at max tension for a duration of 30 to 60 seconds. Load up with two kettlebells, load up with two heavy dumbbells, make sure that you establish the grip, set the shoulders in a good position, get the pillar concept once again where we are stacked well and carry or hold that weight, that is your most basic variation there. So again, farmer's holds I like, or briefcase holds where it is a unilateral load. Those are some of the best core exercises that you could be doing functionally that will transfer over into your daily life and routine. From there, you can obviously branch out into different variations of loading in the front rack, overhead holds, uh, double front rack, you name it, it's pretty much endless how you do that hold. It does not matter from there. But again, this is about building that base structure. And if you do not know how to build that pillar and engage your structure through tension for a farmer's hold or a briefcase hold, then you're going to lack in those other more challenging positions as you add load and intensity. All right, and there you have it. The only six exercises that you need technically to build insane functional strength. The whole key is focusing on intentional tension in those movements and activating and organizing the core in a way that supplies the force well. The positioning and the movement patterning is what matters most. Remember, again, practice does not make perfect practice is what makes permanent. So if you are practicing these six 
but you're doing them with poor movement patterning, there's a good chance that you're going to suffer the consequences as you start to increase the load or increase the speed or challenge yourself with more difficult variations of these exercises. Build the foundation, build it well, and then up from there, you can go ahead and see that progress without the aches and injuries when you're in training. If you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend. You know that we're all working on these things. These six cover all forms of movement that you could possibly, possibly do. So if you have them nailed down, you're good to go from there. So pass the love along. If you're somebody who struggles with training aches and injuries and you need some more guidance on a clear structured path how to get yourself out of that training ache and injury, whether that be the movement patterning itself, the core engagement itself, or just the mobility pieces that can help you get out of that movement deficit, then what I want you to do is drop down below in the description and fill out the coaching application so that I can get in contact with you and we could get you moving in the right direction with those injuries and aches so that you can be your strongest and show up the way that you wanna show up in the gym and in your daily life. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it does not get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. Catch you next week.